ahead and turn to 2 Kings chapter 6. Worship team, you can go ahead and dismiss the rest of us. Let's, let's remain standing, Jordan. You can continue to play on the keys. As Pastor Brenda said, it feels good in here. Come on, can we put our hands together for our family worship service? Thank you guys so much for coming out and, and worshiping with us as a family today. Come on, we get the opportunity, family, to gather with gratitude. We get the opportunity this month to lean in as a family and understand this, when we lean in with gratitude, when we lean in with appreciation, we begin to experience the love of God at an overwhelming level. I really believe this with my whole heart family, that even in this season, this month of November, if we stand in a posture of gratitude, God is beginning to open up your vision, begin to open up your eyes so that you can see something that you never saw before. When we begin to experience the love that's already present, God begins to show us what's down the road. And I believe that God is opening our eyes for your family. I believe that God is opening your eyes of what he may be doing on, in your workplace. I believe God is opening your eyes for why he created you, the purpose, the flame, the passion that's in your, in your belly right now. And God is beginning to show you a glimpse of what he's getting ready to do in your life. But if we would just stand and see the salvation that's already around us and begin to lift up my hands, if you don't do anything else for me, God, you already done enough. So I praise you with all my heart. I, I praise you with everything inside of me. We stand with appreciation. I believe that with all my heart, we, are, we find ourselves in 2 Kings chapter 6. It's going to be on the screen over there. You like the big screen TV family? <laughs> but just to give you some context before you get seated, I, I love this particular scripture. I love this particular scripture with Elisha. Eli Elisha. I, I love that even in verse 8, if you back up a little bit, that the hairs, Elisha, here's when the enemy begins to find out that Elisha was a threat to what he wants to do. See, I wrote in my notes right now that Elisha was a threat to the enemy. Whenever somebody is a threat to the enemy, there will be a dispatch of an attack to minimize their effectiveness. If the enemy has been attacking you, I just want to break the news to you. You're a threat. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're a threat. Or you're a threat. Come on, come on, turn to your, your option number two. That wasn't good enough. Come on, you, come on, you're a threat. So if the enemy is attacking you, it must be because you are a threat. And overnight, overnight in these next couple of scriptures, overnight, Elisha, story begins to change. Overnight, the battle begins to press Elisha. Overnight, something begins to change. And here's where we pick up in verse 15. It says, when a servant of the man of God got up early and went out, he discovered an army with horses and chariots surrounding the city. Discovered that he was surrounded on every side, surrounded by pain. Surrounded by disappointment, surrounded about failure, surrounded about insecurity. So, so I don't know what you may be surrounded by, but overnight, so there's something that showed up at the doorstep of Elisha, and he was surrounded by some things. One season can change your life. One night can change your life. One decision can, can change your life. The day before, everything was okay, but at this, when this night came, everything begins to change, and you know the enemy loves to show up at night. In verse 16, it says, Elisha said, don't be afraid. Don't, don't be afraid. But I love that the servant asked them, what shall, what shall we do? And Elisha responded with don't. 
Maybe it's not a lot about what you should be doing in this season. Maybe God is speaking to you what you should not be doing in this season. Wow. And, and, and he, he responded, and I love his response. Elijah said, don't. Somebody yell, yeah, don't. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid for those. I love this part. For those, come on somebody, for those who are with us outnumber those who are with them. Overnight, Elisha found himself in front of a battle that he did not choose. What do you do, family, when the battle chooses you, but you didn't choose the battle? What do you do overnight when, when your life begins to change and the battle shows up your front doorstep? This is not the right time, God. This is not the right season, God. I didn't prepare for this, God. What do you do when a battle chooses you, but you didn't choose the battle? I believe Elisha shows us how to respond. Before you take your seat, write this down. Here's my message subject for us today, family. When the battle chooses you. Look at your name and say, when a battle chooses you. Heavenly Father, we love you, we honor you. We thank you for your presence that's here right now. We thank you for the food that you're getting ready to serve us today. We thank you that before we get to Thanksgiving, we're hungry right now, Lord. Feed us with your manna, feed us with your living bread, feed us. We're, our souls are thirsty and hungry for more of you. As we gather together as family, even for our online family, we ask that we sit at your table today. Feed us where we're starving at. Feed us where we need to be nourished at. There's nothing like your word. There's nothing like your presence. Come on, somebody say amen. 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 You can go ahead and be seated. When the battle chooses you. I remember in grade school, family, can I take you back real quick? I remember in grade school, come on, my favorite subject besides um, with recess and gym. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm not even going to tell a story. I'm not even going to, that was my favorite subject. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was getting ready to tell a fear. Jim and recess was my favorite subject, Tyler. I can depend on that A for participation to bring my GPA up. Matter of fact, if I can take you back a little bit, I remember 1992, come on. This second grader here was having the time of his life at recess. A hot summer day, just, just having a blast of a time at recess. I remember putting my foot, come on, we, we were playing the greatest game that was ever invented. My kids don't even know about this because you got to go outside to play this game. We were playing tag, Jordan. Come on, somebody. Oh, you're it. Come on, we were playing tag. I, I remember putting my foot in a circle. Come on. Anybody know the nursery rhyme? Any, many, miny. I remember all of the nursery rhymes to determine who's going to be it. And I remember being tagged, and you'll go out and tag somebody else. Come on, we were living our lives. But it was something special about this day. I remember putting my foot in. And I remember saying the nursery rhyme, and, and I remember, I'll never forget, I, I might have to go see some counseling for this, but I remember my classmate named Brian Washington. <laughs> Matter of fact, his name was Brian Manchild Washington. We called him Manchild because he didn't look like a typical second grader. I, I know he had a mustache. I know he drove to school. It, he was a little bit taller. Brian, Man, Brian Manchild, if you're looking at this message, I pray for you. Come visit us at Celebration Church. But I remember this story, this beautiful day that we began to play tag in. And for three consistent times, Brian got tagged, Pastor Brenda. And Brian just kept choosing me. He just kept running after me. And he wasn't a typical second grader. His tag wasn't second grade approval. His tag had a lot of push in it. And for three consistent ones, he, he came and he pushed me. And then again, he, he got it. And then he came and he pushed me again for three consecutive ones. I got to the place that, you know, I said, you know what? I can't take this anymore. 
I'm going to, I got to say something to the man child. So I, I remember saying, I, I goes up to the man child and I, I looked him in the eye because he was, he had to been about seven feet tall. I don't know, compared to the second grader. I remember looking up at him and I said to him, I said, why do you keep on choosing me? He said something I'll never forget, kind of crushed my feelings as a second grader. He said, I don't like you. <laughs> matter of fact, he went a little bit deep. He said, matter of fact, I don't like anything about you. And I remember closing my eyes. And I had to make a business decision as a second grader. I was dealing with a man child. I, I remember closing my eyes. And I remember looking around, and he had some man-child friends. So I, I really had to think about this. I, he was surrounded. He had some help. And I remember closing my eyes, family. And I began to think, should I? I know it's a family worship. I know your kids are here. I don't want to lead your kids the wrong way, but, but should I? <laughs> had to make a business decision. <laughs> but I remember I heard a familiar voice. I, I, I remember when my eyes was closed, I, I heard somebody say, don't worry, we here. Don't worry, we here. And I began to open my eye a little bit. And I remember seeing my three oldest cousins just over in the corner somewhere, just, and they were sixth graders. I, they, and I remember seeing them, and just because I heard their voice, a little bit of confidence rose up in me. Come on, somebody. Just because I heard their voice, I closed my eyes again. And just as I'm going to leave it right here, just, I just want you to know I never had any more problems <laughs> with the man child because of who I was surrounded by. I knew I wasn't by myself. I was surrounded. I closed my eyes, and the battle begins to choose me. Mm, what do you do when the battle chooses you? See, when the battle chooses you, family, I want you to be reminded that you're never by yourself. I want you to be reminded today when a battle chooses you, you're not by yourself. Elisha shows us here the response of the church when a battle chooses you. There will be seasons in your life when a battle chooses you. You don't get to, you don't get to depict when a battle shows up at your front doorstep. You don't get to determine if this is the perfect season for the storm to come your way. Because if it really was, if you had all control, is it really safe? Is it really trusting God? Could it be that God is using this storm to push out of what he has put inside of you? Could it be that God is beginning to orchestrate to put you in the right seat where you will have to trust him at a level that you never trusted him before? And when I look at this, as we begin to go a little bit deeper, there are two responses here. We have the servant response and we have Elisha response. I love that the servant responded with panic. He begins to panic, but Elisha responded with assurance. See, write this in your notes, family. Man's panic will never produce God's power in your life. But the insurance, when Elisha responded with assurance, in order to respond with assurance, you must stand in a posture of gratitude. And this leads me to my first point today, family. When the battle chooses you, choose gratitude. When the battle chooses you, choose gratitude. A grateful heart is a hopeful heart because hope for the future is power in your present. And when you begin to understand that your hope lies right here, that God can pull you out of any storm, that God can lead you out of any storm, that God can give you the will and the desire to continue to lean on him, that is the very strength that you need to, in order to get to the future that what God wants to do in your life. I love it in James chapter 1. Leah preached this on, on, on last Sunday. It says, count it all joy. Yes. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to get my professor on right now. Come on. I just want to look at the screen. I want to utilize this screen a little yes. bit today. It, it says, count it all joy. Yes. See, in other words, we're not counting joy because of the trial. Come on. 
We're counting joy because of the presence of my God in my trial. And as long as the trials keep showing up, I understand my God is going to show up. My God is my God is my very strength when I am weak. Your God is your very strength when you are weak. When the trials show up, guess what? God is getting ready to show up. When the storms show up, God is getting ready to show up. So here's my prayer to you. Keep counting. Look at your name and say, keep counting. You got some things to count today. You have some things, you got some blessings in your life to count today. Don't focus on the storm too much where you forget to count the blessings that's already in your life. The storms want you to take your attention off the blessings that God is already getting ready, that's already done in your life. But here's my prayer today. Keep counting. Keep counting. On Wednesday, keep counting. Matter of fact, this month of November, get you a gratitude journal and start journaling and start writing down everything that God has already done in your life and begin to write down the things that God is getting ready to do in your life. Why? Because you got some things to count. Don't count the storm, count the blessing. Don't count the storm, count the blessing of the hand of God that's on your life. But look at this, it says, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing, somebody say testing, the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Here's what God has been whispering to me. He said, Anthony, this is a producing season for you. Yeah. Yes. That I'm producing something in your life right now. That the heat that you're feeling is producing something for tomorrow. And here's what he said. It's going to produce steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect. Don't leave the surgeon table too quick in this season. Stay right there. Why? Because it's going to produce a steadfastness in your spirit. Let this season produce something. When God does the pressing, the anointing begins to flow. And maybe the pressing is getting ready to create the oil for tomorrow. Maybe the pressing, what you're feeling right now, what you're going through, maybe God is pressing out what he has put inside of you, and that oil is getting ready to do something miraculous for your season of tomorrow, for your season of, of the next, for the next generation that's in your life. You are getting ready to get some oil that's getting ready to carry you into some greater things. If there's anybody in here who believes the calling, the purpose that's on your life, that a God has given me some oil to speak to some things, that God has given me some oil to declare some things. That God is giving me some oil to create what this earth hasn't seen and it relies in you. The very thing that you want to block out, God wants to highlight because he's getting ready to work a miracle right in the midst of a broken place. God is giving you some oil for tomorrow. Stay on the surgeon table. Let him press you with a grateful heart. Because when the battle chooses you, my point number two is this, family. When the battle chooses you, choose God. When the battle chooses you, choose God. Don't choose yourself. Don't choose other people. Don't choose other resources. Make sure you're choosing the ultimate resource that's in your life, and that's the presence of God. When storms show up in your life, who do you turn to first? What is your default posture here? And what I love about this, Keith, you can throw it on the screen. Give me verse number 17. I want to get my professor on today. Is that okay, family? Because I love it right here. It says that, I, no, 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 not, not did, uh, Keith, I'm sorry. 2 Kings chapter 6. I know I'm all, I'm all over the place, Keith. You're going to follow me, though. Watch this. Ch uh, verse 17 said, then Elisha prayed. Lord, please. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, please. He first responded to the servant, and then his next response was to who? Lord. His next response was to the Lord, and the quicker we learn that this battle is not ours, the quicker we turn to the one who the battle belongs to. See, when battles show up in your life, you turn to yourself too quick. When, when battles show up in your life, you turn to your wisdom too quick. You, 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 you turn to I, I, my solution and how I can get out of this. And here's what, here's what Elisha is showing us. The first thing that he did, he encouraged his servant, but then he turned to God. 
He turned to the one that, that has the inf infinite wisdom. He turned to the one that has the limited possibility. He, he turned to the one that, hey, God, open my eyes. Open his eyes. You got to begin to get yourself into a gratitude posture that when storms show up in your life at midnight, at 1 a.m., when storms is ramming through your mind, I'm turning to the one that can lift me up out of pity place. I'm turning to the one who can cover me with peace. I'm turning to the one who can set my mind on a rightful place. I'm turning to the one who can give me a peaceful mind when his word says, if you keep your mind on him, I'll give you perfect peace. Who are you turning to? I, I love this in 2 Chronicles. And that's where we're going now, Keith, chapter 20. Watch this, fam. He said, he said listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours. Somebody say the battle is not yours. But God. The battle belongs to God. The quicker we turn, the quicker we can begin to march. Watch verse 16. Verse 16 says this. Verse 16 says, tomorrow march down against them. Here's my word for you today, family. Here's my word for the online family. I believe that God is saying today you have your marching orders. That God is saying it's time to march out of that place of insecurity. Come on. It's time to march out of that, play, that place of fear. It, it's time to watch out of that place of feeling abandoned. It's time to turn a chapter and begin to march. But the sooner you turn to him, the sooner you can begin to march. You can continue to turn to your past and reminisce about the past. You can continue to turn to your past and rem remiss and romance of what left you and what's lost and what used to be. But God is saying, when you begin to turn to me, I'll give you the strength to march in the right direction of what I'm getting ready to do in your life. God has so much for you. It's time to march. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to march. I know somebody in here got to believe it. Come on. It's time to march, Keith. It's time to march. It's time to march. Come on. I don't know what you're marching to, but you got you to gotta start decreeing. I, I feel a faith in the building right now. God is saying, if you speak it, I'll just move a mountain in your life. If you will begin to just decree it, I'll begin to shift some things in your life. God is saying, it. I want to use your mouth to move a mountain. And you got to begin to speak it. Why? Because I'm getting ready to march you in the direction of what I'm getting ready to do in your life. When you wake up on tomorrow and Monday morning, you're getting ready to go in your job. Come on, somebody. You march with faith. You, you march with an authority of knowing that you're not marching by yourself. That you're marching with a band of an army of the Lord of hosts. You are not by yourself. God is sending angels with you. So if the enemy has been roaming at you, the enemy has been whispering to you, I don't know who I'm preaching to right now, but I'm just here to let you know as a pastor and as your brother and your friend, you are not marching by yourself. You are marching with the Lord. If God is for you, who can be against you? Who dares to be against you when God is for you? Not another day, not another day living by the opinions of, of others. Instead, we are marching in the truth that God speaks over us. Not another day of living by the opinions of others and those opinions now become your reality. But instead, we're marching by the word that God has spoken over us. And the word that he speaks over us leads us in the direction of the identity that he has created you to be. He's created you to be an awesome mom. He's created you to be an awesome husband. He, he's created you to be an awesome leader, not what the opinions of others said, but what the king of the host has, has already decreed over your life. So when you get in that posture, in, that, in your prayer room, come on somebody. Let his words wash you and renew your mind. I believe what God is doing in this season, I believe this, as you, that God is reprogramming our mind at a level of gratitude. 
And when God begins to shift our minds, we begin to see that he has always been there and we're not by ourselves. Now you appreciate the surrounding power of his love. You appreciate the surrounding power of his grace. You appreciate the surrounding power of the authority that's in your life. I believe that God is breaking generational curses off of your life right now and you're beginning to create a trailblaze for your family where poverty can't exist. Come on, somebody. With health issues can't exist. Come on, somebody. That God is decreeing some stuff. And he's saying, you would just let me lead you and let me reprogram your mind, transforming you into the very image. Choose God. We cast out fear today. And we march in love. Never, don't allow fear to rob you of another day in God's presence. We cast out fear. I wrote this in my notes. Fear is the most subtle and destructive of all human diseases. It sits right here and it chews away hours, weeks, months, years. And we stay paralyzed in a season based on our level of fear. Fear has been killing dreams and hopes each day. But the sooner we realize that this battle doesn't belong to us, it belongs to the Lord. God wants to fight your battle today. God doesn't want you to lose another sleep no more because the battle belongs to him. God wants you to understand that the very pressure that's on every side, even when Elisha woke up, there wasn't no enemies around him. And right overnight, there was pressure on both sides. And his response was, Lord, please. I turn to you, God. So when that battle shows up, turn to God. And my last point is this. Write this down. When a battle chooses you, Choose commitment. Somebody say commitment. commitment. When the battle chooses you, choose commitment. Psalms 37 verse 5 says this, family. <clears throat> Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he would do this. Once you choose commitment, life will begin, life will begin to give you answers. Once you choose commitment, life will begin to give you answers. Here's what God has been speaking to me. And we're praying against the, the double-minded mind. We're praying, we're praying against a being straddled on a fence. And God is saying this. Watch this, family. Put the, can you put it back up there for me, Keith? Watch this. I, I, I love this part. Watch. It says to, to choose the way. Now, this, this is singular family. That it says, commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. This is, this is the way. It's a singular. It's not plural. It's not plural. See, see, you can have options in your mind right now about that situation. You can have an A, B, C, D, E plan, and God is saying, in this season, I'm showing you the way. Somebody say the way. There's one way. God is showing you one way. God is not showing you the backup plan. God is not showing you the emergency plan. God is saying, if you trust me, you'll trust this way. I make the broken straight. I make it to go right in the direction. I am showing you the way. And as long as you can trust my process and stay committed, I'll give you healing. If you stay committed to the way, I'll give you breakthrough. If you stay committed to the way, I I'll give you the blessing. This is singular. It's not plural. And all I'm saying to you, what is God saying to you about the way? That situation, what's the way? That, 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 that pressure, God is saying, what's the way? There, there's not another way. God is calling you to trust this way and trust his process. Just whisper that to yourself. Trust the process. Trust the process. What's the process, God? Trust the process. These are the questions. These are your response that you're having with God. Trust the process. 
The more you believe and trust God, the more limitless your possibilities become for your situation. You serve an infinite God. Let's stand to our feet, family. For our 17th anniversary, marriage anniversary, I have a wonderful wife. She, she invited me to a physical, the eye doctor. She takes good care of me. That was my gift. I remember going to get my physical, but I remember going to the eye doctor. And I remember early this week, even had never been to the eye doctor. It's been a long time since probably when I got my driver license, to be honest. And I remember being in the wrong family. And I remember talking with the, uh, with the eye doctor. And I remember looking at the, looking at the screen and look, looking at the page and I didn't know how bad my eyes were until I took this test. When I was saying letters and it was actually numbers, that's when I knew. But I rem she said something powerful to me. She said, Anthony, it's not, I think you need to change your perspective about glasses. So you're probably gonna see me wearing glasses in here soon, by the way. But she says, I think you need to change your perspective. It's not that you can't see, you're getting glasses so that you can see further. And this prescription is here to actually help you. You can only see here, but this prescription is gonna allow you to see there. And I sat with me and the doctor, I, I said, you're, you know you're preaching to me right now. <laughs> Should have invited her to church. <laughs> but here's what I believe what this season for you is about. I believe that God has given you a prescription so that you won't be able just to see here, but God wants you to see there. That God is beginning to say that this prescription, if you begin to change your frame like Pastor Leah preached last weekend, Pastor Timberlake says, time to, time to look again. If you look at the situation again and lean in just a little bit, there's a prescription right there that you can begin to get and put on your eyes so that God can open your eyes and you can begin to see a little bit further that God, your hand is right here in the midst. God has given you a prescription for this time. I'm going to close with this in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Watch this, family. It says, The Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he saw that the mountain was covered with horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Open your eyes and look at the situation again. Open your eyes and re-examine the situation again. Here's why, because God is with you. Here's why his love is present. God love outweighs that pain. God love outweighs that fear. God love outweighs that insecurity. God love casts out all fear. And as, as wide as this owl is right now, that's what I'm praying for you, family. That's what I'm praying for this, for this church that as we march into a new year, the vision is so bright. The vision is so clear that what man, what, 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 what man, what God has put together Man cannot separate. Watch this. That what God has put together in your life for all eternity, man's opinion or man's formity of what he's trying to create to stop it can't do it. It can't prosper because God's hand is on it. Receive the blessing today for your life knowing that God's hand is on you. As we begin to close out, just touch your head where you are right now. Invite the worship team back there. Just begin to touch your head. And here's what we're praying. We cancel every lie that has been spoken over our life. 
We cancel out every fear that continues to keep us up at night. We cancel out even the thought of the mistake or the insecurity or the failure or who left us. And here's what we grab hold today. Through the posture of gratitude, Father, we grab a hold of your love. Your love said that you will never leave us or forsake us. Your love said that you cast out all fear. That your love said that you will leave the 99 and go after the one. We hold on to your love, your grace, your mercy. We hold on to your love today for all of the families that's present right now, for all of our families that's online. We hold on to this prayer right now and we let go of prepares and we grab hold of your love. Lead us in this place. We choose God. We choose gratitude. We choose commitment today. Allow commitment to lead us into your grace, into your mercy. We're committed to you. It is in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen.